divides me, but what I'm supposed to share and to whom I'm supposed to share with, that sort of thing, right? So when um, my office got to me and said, oh, you know, there's this adamant, you know, man, and he's not going to accept no uh, for an answer, I said, okay, oh, um, you know, because my, my schedule is super tight. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's incredible how he still got a date. I'm really amazed, you know, so well done, uh, Wale. Um, and great job, you know, <clears throat> I love the fact that, you know, you sort of embody the, uh, some of the things I want to talk about today. Um, and today I just want you to flow with me. I teach with audio, I teach with visuals, I teach with videos. That's how I like to teach because I feel everything is relatable that way. So good evening to um, the class. I'm grateful it's a small class because that way I can really be myself and we can get things going. Um, I just have one request, one second. Uh, if everyone can, if everyone can mute their um, mics, that would be great. Second. Yeah, working on that. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So today we're going to be talking about a place called there, right? A place called there. And today we're going to be looking at the awesomeness called you, basically. Um, I find that as I grow older, people tend to want to become something like so you know um there's faith on the call there's damilola there's joel you know um we all want to become something it's almost like there's this part of us that can't wait to be something and there's a sense of impatience like there's this constant i want to be better i want to develop i want to be better than i am and th and there's just this constant pressure to deliver on something that you already are. And that's what makes it really, really, it, I, when I tell people that, look, I'm a very different type of coach in the sense that I'm not trying to make you something you are not, by just bringing you out, right? Because if you don't have it, you don't have it. And one of the things that I'm gonna be sharing today are some of what you are, and some of the things that right now, I can honestly tell you that if you start to put these things into place, you will never be the same again, right? Um, like I said, if you want to give it a title, it's called A Place Called There. And you will see that everything is a myth, right? They've, they've sold us a lie. So we're going to get our refund back after this class somehow, okay? Now, the first thing is this. Let us create a foundation for what we're talking about today, which is who is Faith? Who is Wale? Who is Joel? The reason why this question is critical is because it affects how you answer me. Who you think you are determines what you're going to get on this, on this side of eternity. And then, you know, I'm not going to assume we're all Christians, but I'm a Christian, so I'm going to be bringing in some of the principles and values that my religion teaches us. And I really hope that you can learn one or two things, nothing about superiority um, in, in this matter. So in answering that question of who am I, I start to unpack sort of like the genesis of what I'm supposed to be delivering on. Look, they don't need to encourage you about you being great or having dominion. Why? You were already created to have dominion. How can I be clapping for Wally when he starts having dominion, when that is what he's supposed to do? So I'm not of that school of thought that says, let us try and make people become something. I am already that thing. So the time between when I become that thing, right, and where I am now is where you and I need to talk tonight. How can we close the gap, the gap between where Olori Boye Ajayi is and the woman she wants to be in the nearest future? <clears throat> Put this down as a key point. Dominion has always been in my design. Write it down. You're not being cocky. And you have to really learn to shatter the 
almost like those things that tell you, oh, you know, you are being too cocky, you are being too this. No, you are not. <clears throat> Excuse me. You are not being cocky, right? You know who you are, and that's where we are heading tonight, right? Dominion has always been in your design. What it means is this. When you have a fruit, when Mr. Joel has a fruit today, that fruit must have a dominion angle. If he is working in a, comp in a company, he must have dominion. You don't get to tell me that you want to radicalize, transform, or uh, re revolutionize something when you don't even understand what you are and can be or can deliver. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm, I'm recovering from a slight, um, I don't know what to call it now, but please bear with me. It seems like I keep clearing my throat, okay? And I want you to understand that, look, in this same world where they are telling you to be all you can be, when you get to the point where you swing what you can be, they will tell you to slow down. The world is a fickle place to be in right now, very fickle. You must know the one who sent you, what he sent you to do, so that you don't look back waiting for applause. I don't wait for applause from any man. Any, I don't wait for an award for somebody to say, oh, wow, that was so good. I have to be good because the one who sent me is expecting some massive fruits. And I would like to take us to um, a point in, in this conversation. In Genesis 1.28, what does it say? And that is what I like to call the creation mandate. Let me tell you why you may never understand why Mark Zuckerberg is so rich as a non-believer. He is rich because... <clears throat> I'm sorry. <laughs> Only Wally can get me to do this when I'm feeling this way. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's all right. So the reason why Mark Zuckerberg is so rich, and you and I as believers are not yet as rich as he is, one... He doesn't care about who is giving him applause. He, does, he doesn't even know half of what you and I know about creation. The mistake you are making is you think it's only believers that prosper. The creation mandate was not given to believers. It was given to man. Man is, been, he is the one that is told to go, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue. It's a mandate that you and I have. If they say, Olori, what is your purpose? That's my purpose. So I don't understand when people are trying to say, I'm making for my purpose. I don't really know what I'm supposed to do. Your purpose, auntie, uncle, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue. What else do you need? You want to glamorize it? Okay, fine. Say that you are the Africa's leading export reformer where apparel and textile is called. Call it whatever, but please make sure that the creation mandate is upon your vision for your life. A lot of people have a vision for their career. They have a vision for their life. I always say, what is your vision in your vision? Because you can get sidetracked when things like COVID come and they mess you up. And as we go along this journey, I want you to notice that you are not at a disadvantage. It's too late if you're a child of God. Because by the time you have, you, you, you've accepted Christ in your life, you already put yourself far above far above so when some people are complaining about certain things they are saying oh i can't get this done i don't have this you don't say that because you've been given all things that pertain to life this life that you and i are living and godliness it is why categorically i can tell you that i have prospered in this same 2020 that everybody is saying can it be over this has been my most prosperous year In the figures that I have never held in my hand, I've held them in 2020. While people were taking breaks, learning, doing courses and all those things, me, I was working. I'm going on my first somewhat sim seemingly break in, by next week. That's my first break this year. I have not had downtime once. Constantly on the go, constantly on the go, right? And as you begin to look at your life from that creation mandate level 
see, I'm here to elevate your mind. We are going to elevate that vision times one billion. If all you wanted to do was sub-regional stuff, then it's too small. You must replicate and you must represent the one who sent you. That's why Jesus Christ can categorically say to you, Faith and Mr. Jubal and Co., and say, greater works than this shall ye do. Why? Because he knows that of a truth. If they have the same thing I have in them, they should be able to do more. He didn't say it blindly. He didn't say it as a hopeful statement. He said it as a fact and a truth. I don't need you to beg for what is yours. I need you to step into what is yours. I don't want you to try and become where you already are. What you need to start doing is manifesting. When somebody manifests, it's what is in them they manifest. Question, when will you move from, uh, I don't know, from saying that you're going to, to the fact that I am. And I know, look, see, I, I hear you and I understand where some people are like, Olori, but I'm not yet one of the top Fortune 500 CEOs. Oh. So you don't know that we speak those things first and we send a message out to the universe to start to bring together the things that we want. Look, let me show you something. And it's such an interesting thing because I didn't even think about it. It just dropped into my mind now. So this is my notepad. So if you want to know all my secrets for my current year, this, these are all my notes and all of that. So before the, is this before pandemic? No. Let me show you before so you can appreciate. Okay, great. So pandemic started, we had our first case in March, I believe. So look at my date here. What can you see? Can I get some, can we unmute everybody so we can see if we can see here? That's January what? 17th, right? And you can see my money goes here. You have 450 million. You have uh, 60 million dollars and you have 20,000 pounds. I can tell you that the Naira figure and the pounds figure have already been reached. I'm just waiting for the dollar one. And I know that it doesn't take God anything. Now, as at the time when I was writing this money goals, right, I wasn't even yet specific. So backtrack now to, uh, let me see if I can find this. I hope I can. Um, and it's important I show this to you so you don't visualize what I'm saying. You can actually be, see it for yourself, right? Okay, fantastic. So here we are. This is now a couple of months down the line. This is July, if I'm right. So here I have in my notepad, this is now July. So I wrote flow of money for personal income of 100 million monthly income, minimum. Why do I think I can, uh, uh, I can sort of command that kind of money? Because one, Olori knows that she's not lazy. I'm disciplined. I'm extremely hardworking. And it's only a matter of time before I get to this figure. When I wrote that in July, I didn't know. That wasn't even July. Probably June. Probably June. Because then by July, August, I started to see the manifestation of what I'm saying. I don't have belief because I can say it is because I believe in who I am. But who I am depends on who I believe I want come from. I'm made in the image and likeness of God. So some of you pray to God as though he's going to do something. And God is like, no, I want you to create because you are a co-creator. You are a co-creator. Write it. I am a co-creator. God creates nothing. He creates something out of nothing. You can do it. For the first time on, on um, yesterday, I started to play with the visualization of earning one billion naira a month. I've never thought about it. I've maybe thought about it in a year, but I've never thought about it as I can do this in a month. What you need to do is raise your belief in yourself. If you want 250,000 Naira a month, then you don't know who you are. I'm sorry. I, I have to say it outright like that. Olori is in baby steps. If you can take baby steps in the actual uh, materialization of that thing, you can take the steps in your mind as well. 
the difference between the people who get what they want and those who don't is time. They, some people engage time, they engage visualization, they engage the universe to cooperating with everything they want. It is just a matter of time. I'm gonna be showing you a video real quick. And in this video, how many of you know Jim Carrey? You know Jim Carrey, who knows Jim Carrey? Fantastic, yeah. yeah. So he's an actor. This guy, phenomenal, phenomenal. I'm telling you, you know, as at the time you're going to watch the, the clip, you're going to watch. It's in um. He's in a meeting, uh, in, in an interview. Sorry, with Oprah, right? And at this point, this is probably like '97. So we're talking about some almost phew, twenty-three years or more, even more than that about that, you know, a girl where this guy is actually telling us how he got to where he is, right? And I just want you to, to watch with me. And then I'm gonna ask questions because this is a, this is an interactive class. Because we're a small class, it has to be interactive, okay? So just watch with me and we'll discuss afterwards. Sorry, um, we can't get the audio. I don't know if, if it's from my end, but we can hear the audio. Wally, I can't hear you. The, the audio. Yeah. We can't, we can't get the audio from the, from the video. Oh, you can't English hear? Oh, okay. Head. Yeah. All right, one second. Let me check that out. One moment, please. One moment. Is it working now? Wally, on mute, I can't hear you. I can't, can you type it because your, your network is bad. I can't hear you, sorry. One moment. Okay, so it should work now. Bear with me. It would work now, I'm sure. Okay. In life, everybody around you is a teacher yeah. for you. If you're in a bad relationship right now, you are a student of how to have a better relationship. If you're in a bad situation with your boss, that is a teaching situation for you to learn how to get yourself a better boss. Who would have thought in all of the years of the Oprah show, that Jim Carrey would be one of our greatest teachers. Okay, okay. Obviously you knew obviously you knew somewhere inside yourself that you were destined to be Famous because I think it's a really a marvelous thing, that visualization thing you did. Do you, mm -hmm. all, do you all read about this or hear this? That you used to go up on Mulholland Drive and park yeah, every night. and visualize seeing yourself as... Yeah, I would visualize... Uh, yeah, I would this visualize, is when you were broke and poor. You know, right, having mm -hmm. directors interested in me and people that I respected uh, um, 
saying, you know, I like your work or mm-hmm. whatever that is. And, and uh, I would visualize things coming to me that I w- wanted or whatever. This and, was in uh, like 1987, 85. Yeah. 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 And, and didn't I you... had nothing at that time. So it was like, it, but it just made me feel better. It made me at that time, all it really was for me was kind of making me feel better. I would drive home and think, well, I do have these things and they're out there. I just don't have a hold of them yet, but they're out there. Okay. And so you would get this from what? Self-help books or whatever? Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Self-help section. Self-help section. They renamed it the Jim Carrey <laughs> wing. <laughs> So didn't you write yourself a check? I heard yeah. that you did. Is that true? I wrote myself a check for $10 million for acting services rendered. And I gave myself uh, five years or three years, maybe. And, uh, and uh, I dated it Thanksgiving 1995. And I put it in my wallet and I kept it there and it deteriorated and deteriorated and stuff. And, uh, and, uh, but then just before Thanksgiving 1995, I found out that I was going to make $10 million on, I think it was Dumb and Dumber. Maybe. Dumb and Dumber, yeah. yeah. So you visualize yourself like... Yeah, yeah. Visualization works if you work hard. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, that's, that's that the thing. You, you can't hard. just visualize yeah. and then, you know, go eat a sandwich. <laughs> I love that. That was such a powerful moment for me because I was not a person who did visualization or thought about my belief system in... Uh, such a practical way, but I learned a lot from Jim Carrey on that show, and he is absolutely correct. If you can see it and believe it, it is a lot easier to achieve it. So thank you, Jim, for reminding us of that lesson. And it doesn't mean that for every person that writes the $10 million check that that's going to happen for you, because so many times people who um, do that process live in the space of wanting and resisting it instead of writing it, visualizing it, seeing it for yourself, and then letting it go. Letting it go, but moving in the direction of working toward it. So nothing happens at first. It's over the process of the time and the effort and the energy that you put into a thing that the energy comes out. Okay, fantastic. Can you guys tell me what you learned? Who wants to go first? Tell me what you got. Tell me what you got. Tell me what you guys got. First of all, you apply the principle of visualizing yourself. Right. The next. Go ahead, go ahead. Mr. Joel was saying something. Yeah, I said if 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 they apply the principle of visualizing itself mm. in the next five years. Five years, sorry. Basically, it was he just made a plan of his own life. He said, What am I going to be in the next five years from now? That's what right. are the things to put in? And he right. turned it into monetary value, 10 million. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, there's something there that I want to address, you know, and that is going to form the crux of my talk tonight, which is obsession, right? And my question really is how obsessed are you? Do you know what it means for somebody to go take a drive every night? Did you hear the ritual? There is a ritual to this success thing. That's what people don't know. They think they can try this one today, try this one tomorrow and get something. It doesn't work that way. And if you listen to what um, Jim said, he said, I just used to do it even when I was poor. So this has nothing to do with about where you are. Thank you. Damlola said he set a goal for himself and made sure. So whose responsibility was it to make sure the goal was set? It wasn't God. It's not God though. Please write it. God is not responsible for meeting my goals. <laughs> Let Christianity not give us a crutch that we think that it's okay to assume and replace God where we are supposed to be responsible, right? I'm going to share my screen because now it's a, it's a situation where I want us to actually dig deep. Okay? Now, 
I want to say to you that a place called there must be your absolute, and I mean absolute obsession. So when Damilola wakes up in the morning, she's, I don't know if you're a guy or a lady, you know, you are consumed with the way I showed you my own goals in my notepad. You are absolutely consumed. Now, let us ask ourselves the question. Obsession, we may have a vague idea, but according to Success Dictionary, what is obsession? It is an idea or thought that continually, highlight that word for me continually as you write it down. Listen, so many of you stop and start too early. Stop and start too early. You stop too early, you start too early. The things that are driving you are more passion than discipline, than, than strategy. Just because, look, let me tell you, those people that say find what you are passionate about, they are misleading you. Were you not passionate about your ex-boyfriend, the one that you did not marry today? <laughs> See, passion is the most fickle thing that can come to a man at the point of success. Because passion is based on emotion, while success is based on principle. They are not the same thing. You must put in front of you what you want to be, do, have. That is what purpose is. What do I want to do? What do I want to be? What do I want to have? Those are the three questions you must ask yourself when you leave this, this, uh, this session. What do I want to do? Look, nobody is telling you to have your 50-year plan, but please have a plan. Oh, no, but the plan I had last year, I didn't, it didn't materialize. Well, I can't go into, into that today, but some of you set your goals wrongly. And I'll tell you one of the things that you do wrongly. You assume you know the outcome of 2020. Did 2020 not just give you bass goals? <laughs> it showed you that, see, you are not in control of the external things, but you are always in control of yourself. Your response to every single thing you have seen in 2020 is coming out of you, not from the external world. I don't care if they say COVID, the economic downturn, excuse me. I have been my richest in my whole adult life put together. My summation of it is still not what I've made in 2020. And I still have a while to go. So my question is this, what are you obsessed about? Let me show you what obsession looks like in the life of a man I truly, truly love. He's, I, when I watch his videos, I binge on them. Look, I'm so obsessed about my OBA brand and building an empire that surmounts and surpasses even my mentors that I binge on them perpetually. Because here's what obsession looks like. It is an idea, it is a thought that continually, excuse me, ma, excuse me, sir, why did you give up so soon? Honorary is not working. COVID has really spoiled my business. COVID can spoil a bulletproof strategy. It upgrades it, it elevates it. It means that if your business couldn't survive this season, you really have to ask yourself, did you even really have a business? You can pivot, you can adjust, you can repackage, you can, you can do so many things to that business you are, you, are, you are doing right now. It doesn't have to end. But look at this. I like this part. It says, it is an idea or thought that continually preoccupies or intrudes. Meaning, at some point in time, you have allowed worry and a self-limiting belief intrude your mind. And then you said, I'm not good enough. Excuse me, you are, you are so good. There's none like you. There is no body that has existed that is like you. If Jim Carrey, a non-believer, if, uh, um, um, if Mark Zuckerberg, an unbeliever, if Jeff, Jeff Bezos, an unbeliever, can be so stinkingly rich, you must begin to ask yourself, I have way more than they do. You have way more. The intrusion of a thought in your mind that allows you to keep thinking about it, thinking about it. Look, you must be able to, I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to show you something I do with my thoughts. This is how I deal with my thoughts. Can you all see me? Can you see me? Yes, ma'am. Fantastic. So 
when I when I'm having a moment, you know, maybe I'm trying to come up with a plan. I'm trying to come up with something, you know, and I I am not. It's not gelling or going the way I want it to, you know. And I find myself maybe I'm like, oh no, this thing is big. Or how are you going to handle it? Where's the money going to come from? You guys need about 1.2 billion dollars. Where are you going to get that from? This is what I do. I just I catch it. The moment you catch the thought, you stopped it. Catch your thoughts, like literally. I I don't do it mentally. I'm telling you, I go, no, I'm not taking that. I'm sorry. That's not for me. <laughs> I have everything I need. I am a co-creator with God. Remember, that's how I started. I, I, I laid that foundation that you must know who you are. Your ability to create is one of the biggest um, superpowers you have. You know, like how they say Aquaman, he uses water, um, Thor, all those guys. Your own superpower is I'm a, I'm a creator. <laughs> I'm a creator. What can you do that others I can create? Why? God gave you this creation and he said, continue with creation. He gave it to you and said, continue creating for me. He won't leave you with that mindset of you can multiply, you can be fruitful if he didn't put it in you. Question, what have you been obsessed about recently? Are you more obsessed about what you don't have or what you carry? Which one? Because what you have can change, but what you carry is eternal. Eternal. The fruits you bear can change. Anytime I've seen it happen with men and women of your age and your caliber, my age and caliber, their lives change radically in one year. Who knew Songolu this time last year? Um, well, not last year, but let's say January of, of the year before he got, uh, who knew him? One day, they just called him into, and of course, there are so many politics behind it, but just get the moral of my story, which is anybody's life can change. Your passion without discipline is a dream. That's why when people say we are dreamers, I say continue because dreamers don't have, their dreaming is what they do best, dream. So let's move on quickly. I'm going to play this video, like I said, of um, a man that I truly love. And I want you to go in your own time because I don't watch too many series. If I don't watch series that are non-documentary, I love documentaries a lot. Like, if you want to make me happy, just recommend a fantastic documentary that teaches about um, dominion. So I watch a lot of um, monarchy, the British monarchs, all those monarchs, German. I watch all those things because I love the way power is played out, you know, from that level. The things that, see, hmm, the people that do these things you are clapping for, i.e. Mark and all those guys, if you know their daily patterns, you will stop watching or listening to half of the things you do. I'm telling you. Honore, so when do we have downtime? You must stop associating your dream as a job or a chore. You must enjoy even when you're working hard and you're tired. It's a mindset shift that needs to happen that I'm not slaving away. I'm not trying to reach anything. I'm just becoming. And as I'm becoming, I'm getting the benefits. Right? So I'm going to play this video. And in this video, it talks about um, Michael Jordan. And I know that a lot of you know him. And I want you to hold in one hand what Jim Carrey said. He said, I wrote it down, but he said, you can't have a vision and go and eat sandwich. We'll get to that part. Because that is what this video is going to show you. That yes, you may have the vision. Yes, you may even write it down. Yes, as the Bible says, um, meditate on it day and night. Fantastic. But the work you need to put in must out all the people in that industry. So let's watch it. In this video, Michael Jordan is playing with the Bulls, Chicago Bulls. This is their coach, Coach Phil Jackson. These are his teammates. This is MJ here, you know, and I want you to just listen to what the people in the NBA were saying about him at the time when he just started out. So this video is going to show us um, in the 1980s, you know, what he was about and how he got to being one of the biggest and most influential um, culture changers uh, 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 in America today. Mm -hmm. 
Hi, I'm Bob Costas. Join me and Johnny Kerr for exciting Chicago Bulls basketball action here on WGN Television, Channel 9. We weren't very good, uh, you know, during the time leading up to Michael. The team was, you know, on a downward keel, if you will. They've obviously got some problems. Uh, uh, the ball club has not been winning. Back then in Chicago, everyone was a Bears fan. Northsiders were Cubs fans. Southsiders were Sox fans. Blackhawks had fans scattered throughout. But there was no buzz about the Bulls. The Bulls were being outdrawn at the Chicago Stadium by an indoor soccer team, uh, the Chicago State. Basically, the, the state of the team uh, was, uh, you know, it was Rodney Dangerfield that didn't get no respect. The Bulls were in need of a lot of reinforcements if they were going to be a contending team. And here comes a young Michael Jordan, brimming with charismatic talent. When he was in high school, Michael was one of the top recruited high school players in America. He decided to play in Chapel Hill for one of the great coaches of all time, the Dean Smith. And at the University of North Carolina, Coach Smith ran a very tight ship. He was a disciplinarian, tremendous teacher. Michael had, had a ton of respect for him, and he knew he had the best interest for Michael. I think Mr. Jordan's vision and my vision, who is going to help him continue to grow as a young adult, not just basketball, but his education. Because for me, then, the first part was education. Michael's parents did a tremendous job with him. Uh, he was a, tr a fine young man, a very conscientious student, a very good student. This is your mom reading aloud a letter home from you. Dear mom, how has life been treating you? Fine, I hope. I am doing just fine. I am sending you my account number <laughs> so that you can deposit some money in my account. I have only $20 left. Tell everyone I said hello and smile. God and I love you. Love, Michael. P.S. Sorry about the phone bill. Please also send me some stamps. <laughs> Is that not a college student? <laughs> Please send me some stamps. He was very inconsistent as a freshman, but he's one of the most competitive ones we've ever had in our drills. He wanted to get better, and then he had the ability to get better. Michael Jordan tells me one day he wants to be the best player to ever played here. And I said, well, you got to work harder than you did in high school. He said, I worked as hard as everybody else. I said, oh, excuse me. I thought you just told me you want to be the best player to ever play here. He said, I'm going to show you. Nobody will ever work as hard as I work. After about two and a half hours of hard practice, I'm walking off the floor, like drenched, sweat, tired. Here comes Michael, like, pushing me back on the floor, wanting to play a little one-on-one, -on -one, wanting to see where his game was. I was better than he was for about two weeks. He wanted to learn. He wanted to grow quickly. From month to month, from game to game, he was sucking up information. Once he got something and added it to the raw talent that he already had, it was really explosive to see. And by the time we got to the national championship game, he was a great player. The 44th NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Championship, the largest crowd ever for a basketball game. And Did you guys hear what um, that guy who was his uh, teammate said about the fact that he said, I was the best. For how long? For only two weeks. Right. So my question is this. Do you really think you can get the top spot? I wrote this down. I said, the top spot is always up for grabs. You just have to really want it badly enough. Always. Notice what that guy said. He said, MJ 
was raw talent, meaning that your raw talent with discipline can get you to the top. That's why I'm saying to you, your passion is not big enough. It, it can never, passion can't get you through to the top. It's impossible. Without discipline, it can't do it. And I'm going to be showing you some people as I, as I, um, we're going to, if I have time, I'll still share more on that video, but I'll let um, Bale continue teaching you guys, you know, with it. But I just want to continue with my, with my slide so that we can just look at some attributes of other people because some people say, okay, you know, it was MJ and all of that. But here's why I want you to understand that, look, I just need you to believe in yourself and then add a bit of work ethic that is amazing. Add some discipline, add some extra, add some going beyond. Like, see how the guy said that MJ were, he was, um, he will be on the court. They finished practice. A lot of people, if they finish practice, they'll go off the court. MJ will stay. Let me say this to you. You don't get rewarded because you are passion, you are um, talented. You get rewarded by the universe for being consistently hardworking and talented. Right? Which is why some of you are upset with your friends who just started their um, clothing business or they just started their uh, events company. And you're like, how did, she, how did her business take off so quickly? How, she's getting clients. She's not getting clients because she's the best. She's getting clients because she's following protocol. Excuse me, ma'am, follow protocol. Obsession is one of them. You can see from what all those people were saying about MJ that he was obsessed. For him to go to the assistant head coach and say to the head coach, I want to be the best. When last did you ask yourself, Wale, what will it take to be the best? And are you obsessed about it? How much are you willing to do to, to get it done? With the way my health has been in and out and all of that for the last few weeks, I am still showing up. Because the, the universe doesn't even understand. It doesn't even reward people that take breaks. Because there'll be a time in your life you can take breaks as you wish. Look at MJ now. Retirement looks good on him. He has even added weight. Did anyone see that? He doesn't even look like MJ again. Do you understand? So here are 17 people that I want you to look at how they work. And I'm not necessarily going after, um, you know, basically what, they've, uh, what they do. I'm not saying you should adopt what they do, but I'm just saying here, daily routines. I'm all about the habits, the routines, because I can tell you all these big things and all of that. You can go and write it down. But if your dailies are not in check, and I really would like all of you to, from today, look at how you spend your days. Do you spend it just wishing, washing, roll out? I, and even some of you are very hardworking, actually. I actually believe so. For you to be on this call, I think you're one of those 1% who say, you know what, I'm going to give it my best. But sometimes it's not just your best, but the extra that is necessary, okay? The CEO of, of Apple, he routinely emails his employees 4.30 every morning. Mary Barra rose to um, the top of GM Motors after 33 years. Guys, hey, can you imagine what 33 years looks like day in, day out? This thing will be joke. It's not a quick win. That's not what you are after. Oprah doesn't have a quick queen story. This woman has no quick queen story. You have to look at it as, you know, see, the, the amazing thing about it is that, like I Okay. Right? So Mary Barra, um, I'm trying to get her own backstory. Give me a minute, guys. Okay, fantastic. So she started at the age of 18, guys, 18. And she worked her way up the ladder. She, she made smart decisions. When you read about what Kind of person she is she has the willingness to give everything she has are you willing that's why i said this obsession thing is not a joke right and you can't even say to yourself for one second i get breaks 
That's why I said I have to show up. I can't send a mail to Wale. It's not because he's Wale. It's because Olori says she will give 100% every time. So if, even if it was Mr. Thomas that I had a meeting with today, I will still show up. If I have to sniff um, a seven rub um, menthols to get to be able to do a class for an hour, I'm good. I will do it. Dallas Maverick. Guys, let me say this to you. Everybody thinks that this guy had a stroke of luck, but it's a lie. This guy was putting in the work and he didn't take a vacation for seven years, right? A lot of people say it's because of the fact that he sold his company, um, his first company at the peak. That's why he got into money, their business. People will always have, they will always have a, their own version of the story when they were not in it. So they are open to saying whatever they want. This woman is one of my OGs, man. I'm telling you, I just really love her. She is a workaholic. She's the current head of the Brazilian oil giant, Petrobras, right? And she started as an intern in 1978. She rose because of her tireless work ethic. And now they nickname her Cavero, which is a slang for the armored vehicle used by police, meaning that she's tough, she's tough but do you understand what I'm saying? These people are not in any shape or form trying to play. It's like a, it's an obsession that has eaten them and they don't know how else to behave, right? So you have Amazon, Jeff Bezos. This guy is just, I mean, I really want you guys to go and look at the early days at Amazon with this guy. I really do. Please take time out. I can't teach everything in one class or in one hour. But go and look at the early days of Amazon. It was, this guy was working 12 hour days, seven days a week until 3 a.m. just to get things shipped. That's why I don't allow my staff to feel like they're overwhelmed. They're not overwhelmed, they're just unorganized. Everything can be done if you organize your life. Everything you need to get done can be done. Today I knew I had a class between the hours of three and six. You can't reach me, I need to rest. So look, those who complain about time are just out of control and they are just excuses. They are, they are really just excuses. You have to understand, Jeff Bezos said that he was going to be valedictoria, right? During their, um, like when they started, which means that he said in his own words, everyone else understood they were working for second place, meaning I didn't come here to sell Akarangari with you people, just because we are classmates. Do you understand? Look at the sisters, Venus and Serena. You know, these girls were shooting tennis balls from 6 a.m. Can you imagine your seven-year-old, if you have a child on this, on this call, who gets up at 6 a.m. every day to play ball just because they want to be the best? It's not about um, just the work ethic. Look at what... Jeff Bezos did, you know, look at even the sisters, they were obsessed with tennis. They were eating tennis. What are you obsessed with? Because I've already settled the fact that you can be anything, guys. Nobody needs to sell you the idea that you are great. Stop buying into it. Get a refund. Tell them you know who you are. I know what I can be. That's too late to start persuading me about. But, and, and, and you know the funny thing? How to do anything is easy. I'm telling you guys, it's the cheapest thing you can sell people. How to do things, you know, because nobody will do it. What is the, is, is the cheapest thing you can sell to anybody? How? Sell it, you will see. People will buy it, but they will never do it. So they will come back again. But let me even give up the knowledge space people because, yeah. Carlos Gosson, he flies more than 150,000 miles a year. Question, who knows you are obsessed with what you're obsessed with? The people this guy met on his trip, I am very sure they know what he's trying to achieve, right? Look at the kind of thing that this guy was doing. He was working 65 hours a week. Can you please write this question down for yourself? How many hours do I work a week? Write it. Take a survey next week. Start from Monday till the next Monday of our week. And look at how many active, productive hours of work did you put in in a week? You will be shocked. You think you work a lot. You don't work a lot. You do more time thinking about the work than actually doing the work. So try and look at that. Then you have Hong Kong business magnet. 
Lin Kaxing. Um, I hope to meet him um, very soon. He's one of the richest men in Asia, okay? And he started out working everybody as a teenager. And now he has a $31 billion empire. Can I just say this for the record? Never put money first or as a reason why you want to be anything or do anything. The figures I showed you, God linked each figure to what he wanted me to do to get it. He put those figures as the byproduct. If you let money push you into your goals, you'll be tired very quickly because before money comes fulfillment, you must be fulfilled first. The money is a byproduct that I work hard at, I, I deserve this. And there are some things that God said to me, I just want to share one or two. Number one, he said, Olori, I am not in charge of all your results. Guys, let me repeat it. God is not in charge of all your results. Some of the things you are doing, you are the one that will reap what you have sown. It's a common law. It's a universal law. And that's why as believers, they are the poorest because they want the higher power to do the work. They want God to be the one to do the work, to make things happen. God, send me my destiny helper. God, do this. And then it will now be time to, to do certain things. They won't do it. Facebook COO, some of you know her, Cheryl Sandberg, pretty incredible woman as well. I love her ethics. She's probably one of the people that taught me how to ensure that I don't allow my family life, my business life, my private life to interfere with one another. I need privacy. It's just how I'm wired. You may not be wired that way. Some of you, you're a social junkie. Fantastic. It works for some people, right? For me, I need to be able to box moments in my life. So because I am a very driven person, I can drive myself to the point where I'm working constantly. So what I do is I pick certain days, times, you know, and I, I say this one is untouchable, right? When I finish this call, I'm going to be with my husband because today I haven't spent time with him. I have to do it. I'm not going to let any work. There's nothing important to that point that if I've not done it up until now, I'm not doing it. Between the hours of five, um, between the hours of six and eight, I was supposed to be with my children. They went out for a party. When they came, we were together. So I'm not going to let anything balance your life so you don't say you work so hard, you can't do this, you can't do that. My guy, please oh, have guys like this guy. Oh. Have guys like this guy. Everybody can do what Michael Jordan did with their own gifts. That's my quote of the day. Everybody can do what Michael Jordan did, which is to become a legend with your own gift. Your own gift is what you need to sharpen. Your own gift is what you need to discipline. Your own gift, like they were calling this guy, he was flying Air Jordan. That's how they came about the name Air Jordan. Because the guy was flying, literally. But that was his gift. Your own gift may not be foot, uh, basketball, but it's something. Why? Oh, Lori, prove it. How do you know I have something? Because God said in the beginning, let us make man in our own image and likeness. Then he now said to him, go, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, and subdue. That's the link. Not because anybody is trying to make you feel better. I'm saying to you, you already are a legend. You don't need to be to, to, to be chasing after being the best. You are the best. Just be it, right? Now, we have this guy. He's just an amazing guy, Martin Sorrell. He's a legendary workaholic. And some people have it in them. They are cholerics. They just literally do any kind of, you know, work at any time of the day. His typical day starts at 6 a.m. And he's notorious for being a workaholic and a micromanager. I'm telling you these things so you can see these people and you can understand what kind of work ethic they have. Jeffrey M. Immelt, I love him as well. I, I really, 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 really like him. He is, um, of course, a Fortune 500 um, CEO, but he talks about the fact that all of his life, he divides his time. He devotes a specific portion of each day to deal with every part of his business. I'll take that again. He devotes a specific portion of each day. I didn't say when he's feeling like it. Each day, guys. Look, the greats are great for a reason. It's not by chance, it's not by any of those things. They're just great. The late Kobe. Look at this, look. Oh man, 
there is a pattern to this, guys. The greatness you are trying to chase is a pattern thing. It's not about what you are trying to become. That's what I'm trying to say. Let me demystify it for you. There are just some things you need to do. Obey the protocols, obey the principles that you can see. The people that you clap for are just putting specific laws, principles in place, and they're doing it better than you. You, you're clapping for them. When are we going to clap for you? When? I love Indra. Indra is an amazing woman. She pushed herself. She had a vision of what she started out as a receptionist. Question, those of you who are right now, maybe you are at the bottom of the company, you are really none of the important staff, you're not the C-suite guys. My question is this, and if you are part of the C-suite, what is it going to take for them to make you the most valuable, irreplaceable person in that company? Elon Musk, how can you talk about the greats and not talk about this guy? Look, Elon is a beast, right? I think someone, some people just have some mad work ethic that it takes a lot. This guy works 80 to 100 hours a week. He says, if others are putting in 40 hours, I'm going to put in 100. He says, even if you're doing the same thing, you know that you will achieve in four months what it would take them to achieve in one year. Guys, there's a method to the madness. This thing we're all trying to achieve, trying to be, be successful, be this, be that. There's a method. If you don't allow yourself to become this person who, you know, gets to a point where they can say, okay, you know what? I am going to put in the work. I'm going to do this and all of that. You are going to miss it because you, they'll keep selling you that you, how to do it, how to do it. You too, you'll be buying it. Be mentally tough. As I wrap up, I just, want to I just want to recap on the things I've shared. Number one, remember who you are. Dominion has always been in your design, always. It is not something you are trying to be. It is someone that you are already. Number two, you are co-creator with God. God created the universe and said to you and I, continue with creation. Some people have stopped. Don't stop creating. Create with your mind, create with your imagination, create with your, with, your, um, with your will, create, don't stop, all right? Don't forget, am I good enough is what lazy people say. It's what lazy people say, am I good enough? Because the person who is good enough is working on being better. They don't have time to be asking themselves, am I good enough? Look at what the coach said about, um, um, about Michael Jordan. He said that Michael didn't switch off. When will he have time to know he didn't switch on? He doesn't have time for that because he's constantly working and he's working. But here is another beautiful thing I want you to remember. When I listed these 17 people, I told you, I said, it's all a matter of time. The difference between those listening to me today who have made the choice and said, Olori, you know what? I'm going to stop looking for answers to how to become great and just be great because I am already great. It's just a matter of time. In five years, you will be a great. It's just a matter of time. There's something that they said also in that video. Mike said, I had to earn my stripes. Earn your stripes in the beginning. If you start out today with, a, with an event and only three people show up, please clap for yourself. Clap for yourself. You've done well. Don't look at it. Don't, don't, don't use your own chapter one to be judging another person's chapter 36. You can't do that to yourself. And then I just want to remind you that you are enough. You are enough. As you are, you are enough. There is nothing wrong with your makeup. There is nothing wrong with you. You just need to get better and better. In being better, you are already becoming. In becoming, you are already fulfilling. In fulfilling, you begin to dominate. That's how it works. Thank you so much for having me, guys. These are my details. Um, Instagram, my Facebook, my Twitter, LinkedIn, and email address. If there's anything that you want to, um, you know, maybe talk about from now, then yeah, let's do that. Thank you so much for having me tonight. This is awesome. This is just what we need to be doing. Thank you sincerely. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Sincerely, you are making my friend. Am I the only one that can't?
Ms. Here Wale. No. He's breaking up. Okay, guys. Does anyone have questions? Okay, Wale is back. Sorry guys, can you hear me now?
Can anyone hear me, please? Um, okay, so we're going to just end this section right here, and um, I'm going to write you, I'm going to get in touch with everyone on the CSG, but because it seems like the network is pretty, pretty bad um, from my end. I'm sorry, guys, I have to work on my network. I don't know what happened. Uh, it seems like it's pretty bad, so uh, I'm going to work on it, and then um, we'll stick to my own. Then I'm going to write you. On um, the CSG, and then we'll continue from there. Okay, guys. Can anyone hear me? Oh, I might have to end this. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs>